This that collard greens, cornbread, neck, bone, back, back. Get it from my mama and you don't know where your daddy at. With these vibes. <sighs> Y'all, I'm ratchet and I'm proud. And I'm proud to be ratchet. And thank you, Cardi B, for helping me really and truly understand that. Y'all, if y'all don't know, that came from Bickin' Head. And if you don't know what Bickin' Head is, then you shouldn't even be listening to my podcast because you're not really my friend. All my friends know what Bickin' Head is. Shout out Cardi B. Ugh. Y'all gotta catch up. Y'all, what's up? It's me, 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 and you're tuning in to a brand new episode of Vibes, the podcast. Uh, before I start rambling, as I usually do, let's get into the song of the week. I really, really, truly like this one. It's a different vibe. <laughs> Plug. This is Pop Lock and Lemon Drops by Pink Caravan. Y'all take a listen, and I will be right back. Toot that thing up, mommy, make it roll. Once you pop, pop, lock it for me, girl. Get low. If you don't wanna give it to you, baby girl, let it show. Once you pop, lock, drop it for me, baby, we can roll. I'm a recipe choking the lemon drops You be safe, pop, lock and drop The look hope when it pops soon What with this is good, that's what my grandma say She say, she say, she say Like, E-I-E-I-O-O-O E-I-E-I-O-O-O Don't hit my phone if you fuck bro Don't hit my phone if you fuck bro I'm not the type to bring a smoke out Smoke out I'm just a god, I like to smoke out Smoke out you miss when fun was fun I left fun up at my mama a crib And I'ma look it up at this crib And my Grammy a whip Feel up fantastic When I pop out I look up to look at me It's back boy or a gummy And the sun is so silky I play them all so clueless The shots he tried to foolish Baby, who you fooling? I mean, I am in the same Those other guys Hmm, okay, okay. Uh, Girl, sway, set, and she's that boy brave Like I have to be Think I once but twice with boy Before you come for family That's on me, that's on me That's on me Taste it, I'm a recipe Choking the lemon drops You be safe, pop, lock and drop The look hope when it pops soon What way this is good, that's what my grandma say She say, she say, and it goes like E-I-E-I-O-O-O E-I-E-I-O-O-O Don't hit my phone if you fuck bro Don't hit my phone if you fuck bro I'm not the type to bring a smoke out Smoke out I'm just the girl that likes to smoke out Smoke out I'm a tea in the coop, who be you again? I can't do no negativity, oh wait, I'm sad again I let my top down when I'm feeling down I feel myself again on top now On top, on top, on top now Taste it, I'm a recipe, choking the lemon drops You be safe, pop, I can drop the look hole when it pops so on What would this is good, that's what my grandma say She said, and it go like E-I-E-I-O-O-O, E-I-E-I-O-O don't hit my phone if you fuck bro Don't hit my phone if you fuck bro I'm not the type to bring a smoke out I'm just the guy that likes to smoke out This is me like dinner date with the best But you have sneaky keys to the world Yo, I'm back Yo, did y'all hear that? Did you hear it? Did you? Cause like, did you? <sighs> That's the joint. That's Pop Lock and Lemon Drops by Pink Caravan. That's P-I-N-K-C-A-R-A-V-A-N. You can find Pink Caravan on Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, uh, Facebook. And the EP is called A Very Sad Happy Birthday. And... It's actually super dope. Like, if you're into super dope music now, um, and not everything is drill or trap, you know, sometimes we need our trap, but if you're into, into this type of music, definitely go support Pink Caravan. Uh, Pop Lock and Lemon Drops is my favorite right now. Uh, again, that EP is called Very Sad Happy Birthday. Look her up on um, iTunes, Spotify, 
um, and go and get the song, download the song, or get the EP. Uh, also, shout out to Pink Caravan for giving me the okay to feature her song as a uh, song of the week. So yeah, once again, go support Pink Caravan. That's all one word. All right, y'all. After we've popped, locked, and lemon dropped bars, let's get into some black shit. Girl, what's all that black shit? I don't know, black ass shit. All right, first up on the list, <laughs> y'all. I didn't know that they were still alive, but okay. So apparently Pleasure P and Baby Blue from, y'all know, Pretty Ricky, got into a physical altercation during a show in Phoenix. So, you know, they were performing on stage and then Pleasure P took over the mic and started, you know, taking over the stage and being extra and Baby Blue didn't like that. So when they got backstage, Blue was like, why you got to be extra? Why you got to take over the stage? And then Pleasure P was like, man, get this nigga out of my dressing room. And then Baby Blue pushed him. And then they got into a fight. And then they said Pleasure got the best of him. Um, I really didn't know that they were still alive. Like, it's not even a joke. I didn't... I don't know. I don't... I... <sighs> I, you know what I'm always stuck on? That this grown man calls himself Baby Blue. And he has to be above 32. 30. I'm going to give him 35. Where? How? Why you call yourself Baby Blue? Is it Baby Blue or is it just Blue? Either way, two grown men fighting in Phoenix, Arizona of all places. Because one of them was taking over the stage. I don't even... I don't even know why I chose to talk about this. I'm moving on. So let's move on to Nicki Minaj in this interview. Now, I'm disclaimer, I did not watch the interview because I couldn't get past the the clip of her crying. Ugh, whatever. So, I'm still confused about the story. Apparently, Nicki Minaj went um, and did an interview with Beats One Radio. Um, talking, discussing... A lot of different things, but one thing that stood out was that she said her feelings were hurt by the interview that Cardi did after the Motorsport song came out, and she felt like basically Cardi showed her a uh, lack of respect. Dear Nicki Minaj, do you remember your incident with Lil' Kim? Okay, here's, here's my opinion, because this... I'm I'm still not understanding why her feelings were hurt, why she was crying. Um, my sole opinion is no one owes you any kind of respect, Nicki Minaj. Like, it's not Cardi's responsibility or focus to be like, yes, I have to respect Nicki. I mean, she went on record and said that she didn't have any issues with you and that it was all made up by the internet. And if she did have something an issue with you, she would address it and she would communicate because you all are two adult women and see you basically just told made Cardi out to be a lie because you're not being adult right now. You, instead of calling her up and said, Hey, my feelings were hurt. You decided to go and use this social media platform and tell the whole world that your feelings were hurt, so now you look like the bad guy. I still don't even understand what the issue is. Um, and I don't even have time for this story. Because it, it <laughs> I'm like, I don't even understand why this upset me. Be I just feel like she was trying to intrude on Cardi's success right now because she couldn't handle it. And that's just my opinion. I could be 100% wrong. But you just don't come out and do that. And make up a petty reason for your feelings to be hurt. Like it, it makes no sense. Nikki, you're 35 or however, however old you are. You're too old to be doing this shit, girl. Like move on. I'm as I'm about to do. So if y'all have not followed this story, <laughs> it is so funny to me. So a 26 year old woman named Kinesia Posey was pulled over in her car. She was on the passenger side. Police checked the car. Um, and found marijuana 
and cocaine in the car. They also found it in Kinesia's purse. When the police questioned her and asked her, where did the drugs come from? This heifer said, it's a windy day. The wind must have blew them in my purse. I almost passed out because what you're not going to do, what you're not going to do, Kinesia, is make up a lie so terrible that even the lie didn't believe the lie that you told. Like, girl, damn, who taught you how to lie? You're black. You're supposed to be a master at it. You're supposed to have a PhD in lying. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure you come from a family of liars. Because we're black. And if we don't know how to do nothing else, we know how to lie. But you, you told the police that the wind blew the drugs in your purse. Girl. Girl. I mean, you could have said some stupid shit like, you know what? I found it on the ground, put it in my purse, and I was going to, you know, turn it into the police station. That still sounds stupid as shit, but it's way better than the wind blew it into my purse. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm moving on because Kinesia made me angry when she told this very stupid lie. <laughs> you blamed it on the wind, girl. Not the wind blew my wig away, but the wind blew drugs into my purse. <sighs> Jesus help us all. All right, y'all, I saved the best for last because, I mean, the best is always last. Coachella was not Coachella. It was Beachella. It was Beyonce University. That was the blackest, black, blackity, bleak, black, bleak, the bleak pinta. That was the blackest shit <laughs> ever. Shout out to Beyonce for taking over Coachella. Let me tell you. So I knew yesterday was Coachella. I knew I knew that you could it would be streaming on YouTube. But you know what? I was celebrating some other shit. I caught the last 30 minutes of Coachella, which was basically Beachella. So I, I missed everything. I missed the, you know, beginning of the of uh the Beyonce concert basically. But I caught the last 30 minutes. And um I mean I lived. I I lived. I lived for the HBCU band. I lived for the dancers. I lived for Lay Twins. If you don't know who Lay Twins is, look them up. Uh, Beyonce usually always has them, you know, performing with her. I mean, they are super talented. Um, I lived for her and Solange coming out there doing, um, I can't even think of the name of the song right now because I'm so excited. Uh, shit, what's the name of the song? I'm not gonna say it because I'm not gonna fuck it up. Y'all will not get me beehive. But I lip get me body. I knew it was gonna come to my head. When they did the, the get me body dance, I was like, sisters, unite! On some Power Rangers shit. And I lived for the Destiny's Child reunion. Shout out to Michelle. I wanna focus on Shell. Shell didn't fall. Shell kept that beat. Shell walked the right walk. You know, she a little po. And if you're from the South, then you know what po means you thin. You know, Shell need to gain some weight. But she did what she was supposed to do yesterday. Because I knew in my heart, I know in my heart, that B dug into her ass. And she was like, Shell, not today. Not at Coachella. The devil is a lie. You better look him in the eye and tell him not today, devil. I mean, it was everything, y'all. And we got a lot of people enrolling in Beyonce University right now. You know, I, I want y'all to know that that's, that's not real. I hope y'all really know that Beyonce University is not real. Um, All in all, the last 30 minutes that I did see of the Beyonce concert, because I don't even know what Coachella is. I just know that it was a Beyonce concert. It gave me life. I was so excited to see the HBCU band there. Like, people who, who did not go to an HBCU, you missed out on college life. You're, like, your college doesn't even compare to an HBCU. Shout out to Jackson State University. That's my alma mater. I mean, y'all missed it. You, you missed everything. 
I mean, you blew it basically when you chose to go to a PWI. But whatever, I'm not talking about your school. Um, Beachella forever. That's what it should now be known as. Coachella. Coachella doesn't even sound right anymore. It's Beachella. Also, shout out to Rihanna being right in the very front row. Um, basically naked as fuck. Rihanna had on a curtain basically wrapped around her because nipples and all were out while she was, um, vibing to the Beyonce concert. Do you, uh, Rihanna? And Rihanna over there got thick to the motherfucker, <laughs> thick to the motherfucker, eating them collard green cornbread, <laughs> neck bone, back fat. She got it from her mama and she don't know where her daddy at. I see what you're doing, Riri. Um, shout out to everybody who came to Coachella. Beachella, my bad. Um, you know, the fashion, the all of that. I'm not talking about that. I mean, everything basically revolved around Beyonce, Destiny's Child, Solange, the HBCU band, the dancers, and Lay Twins. I mean, what else do you need? That's it for black shit. Let's get into what the fuck, Chicago. It's Mimi Wallace reporting live from the backside of your backside. Here are your weekly updates for what the fuck, Chicago. A driver of a stolen car crashed and fled on foot after spotting police following him. A witness stated that you could hear him say, Oh, damn, that ain't even my car, as he fled. Patty Blagojevich is fuming after discovering a Snapchat Snapchat filter of her husband, former Governor Rod Blagojevich, hair and inmate number. Patty Blagojevich called the filter disgusting. Governor Bruce Rauner's campaign has used the filter to link J.B. Pritzker to Rod Blagojevich. Patty, darling, you can only call it disgusting if your husband had not tried to sell the Senate seat of Barack Obama. I mean... That's why he's in jail, Patty. He's disgusting. Sandy and Jesse Jackson Jr. has quietly wrapped up their messy divorce case and settled it while ending with a hug. The couple, who embezzled $750,000 in campaign funds, will no longer need to appear in court. And by settle... I mean that Sandy has decided to settle it down for now. (laughs) Women are crazy and they don't give up on anything, especially the chance to be petty. You go ahead, Sandy. You go forth and you be great. That concludes your weekly updates for what the fuck, Chicago. All right, y'all, let's get into the question of the week. I truly, (laughs) so many people responded to this one because I guess it hit home. I guess y'all was like, this is real right here. It's real in those streets. In these these streets. Shout out to uh, Dustin from the friend zone because that's his thing. Um, So the question of the week was, what was your first major bill that took you by surprise? And when I tell you everybody answered this question, I mean, everybody's probably still surprised. So I'm going to read as many as I can without, you know, dragging it on, making it seem real long. So we got a uh, Joy Carter. Hey, cousin, who said her rent and her car note. Um, we got T. Jones, the car note. Mark Brayboy said credit card. Bruh, uh, how much was your credit card bill? Fuck. Car notes, Demisha Harvest, Yabri, car note and the insurance. See that right there? I feel you, Yabri. Because it's one thing to pay that car note, but then you got to fuck around with the fuck around and then pay the car insurance. And no, you don't have liability. You got full coverage. You know what? That did fuck me up, Yabri. It fucked me all the way up. Uh, David Harris said, rent. Listen, you know it's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get that money for the rent. (sighs) Boda Kase Fada D. 
Uh, let's see, we got Clarence said, how about when your mortgage goes up because your taxes went up? See, l listen, Clarence, you talking about some real grown people shit. I'm not at that point yet where I have a mortgage. So I go, but okay. Uh, Liz Bray said, <laughs> having a baby. <laughs> I don't even know how you feel, dog. I don't know how you feel. We got Diamond Garner who says student loans, Diamond and Shakira, uh, says student loans. See, here's, see, the question was, what was your first major bill that took you by surprise? You know what? Y'all know what I just thought about? You know, when you first, um, what is it called? Like your deferment has ended or, or the forbearance on your student loans that six months is up. Then they send you that first student loan payment. That shit do be like $400. And it's like, where y'all think I work at? Because obviously, you know, it's not where y'all think I work at. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh, baby. All right, who else we got? We have a, um, let me go through these. Gita over on Instagram said, an old light bill I had at 17. It was $1,300. And I was like, what the fuck? I ain't never had a bill. And the woman said, I had one since 91. Hell, I was six with bills. Gita, listen, on oh baby, your mama put the light bill in, in in your name. And I mean, sir, you've been paying bills since 91. Uh, Esco Art said, I think it was more the fact that I had to pay so many at one time. No one really prepared me for that part. Over half the check goes to bills. The more you make, the more you pay. I swear to God. I really came to that conclusion or came to that understanding last year. It was like, oh, okay, last year we got a little increase, 15 cent, which I'll look, ugh, and you, you know what? Whatever. Praise the Lord. But that that's so true. The more money you make, it, it seems as though the more bills pile up or, or the more bills just come to you. Um, that's a really good point. That it's probably what I was not prepared for. How many bills, like the fact that you have to pay so many at one time. Uh, we got badass boomster. Uh, so shout out to the, the what up Joe podcast. The first car insurance payment. I called up there like, yo, this is a Lumina, not a Lamborghini. There seems to be a mistake. I understand how you feel. Uh, shy Momo said the first rent payment at 19 broke my soul. Listen, Momo, I was never moving out of my mama's house at 19, even though I was in college. Like, I was, I, I, no, fuck. Oh, so F Breezy 7-Eleven over on Instagram said, breaking the lease at the Palisades hurt my soul. Shout out to all my Jackson State University people who stayed over at the Palisades who also broke that lease because he was like, I'm not giving y'all this money. Fuck you. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Uh, Chili, 101389, said, my first hospital bill. Like, what do you mean I owe 16000 after insurance paid? Chili, what the fuck happened to you, girl? Did you break your body? Did they put you back? Put me back together again. Did they put you back together? Don't worry, y'all. I mean, Chili basically told them she was poor, and so they waived that whole bill. Um... <laughs> Yen Teasy over on Instagram said, girl, I'll love them. I still be shocked on the first of every month. I feel you because every month I'd be like, why? Why do I have to do this all over again? Like, I just did it. Do y'all ever feel like when you pay your bills and then a month, uh, an entire month goes by and you'd be like, no, that wasn't even a month. I paid all them bills two weeks ago. Like, do you ever sit and question time? Like, on oh, baby time, they never go this fast. That was not a whole month. I'm not going to pay this again because I just paid it. That's how I be sometimes. Uh, Who else? We got Gemini Teapot said the energy bill. I called my parents and cried. Whitney D. Cliff says student loans. Um, Simply DD 22. Hey, best friend. The first, maybe once I realized how much college was per semester and that I'd be in debt for the rest of my life. Um, I think that's it, y'all. If I didn't get to everybody, I do apologize. I'm trying to, you know, read them as I find them. 
the first major bill that took me by surprise was, uh, hmm, let me see, let me, let me tell y'all the truth. I think it was the rent plus the security deposit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I knew how it went. I knew that. I already knew that. But see, I didn't have, like, the the $300 security deposit. No, the security deposit was the same amount as my rent. And so, you know, I had my rent ready. I had all the money ready. Moved into my first apartment on my own. Be it that it was in my grandma's building, but, you know, I still got to pay rent. I don't get no breaks, fuck. My grandma was like, all right, you know. So you got to give me the rent plus the security deposit. I was like, how much is the security deposit? Like, okay, $300. She was like, nah, it's the same as your rent. And I was like, hold on. Like, what you mean? Like, what you mean, grandma? It's the same as my rent. Like, I, that's a lot of money to give. Am I paying two months rent instead of one? No, no, no. This is secure. What you mean? Like, Grandma, what you mean? <laughs> That's the only question I could ask, y'all. That hurt my soul. Um, shout out to everybody who answered the question. So again, what was your first major bill that took you by surprise? People still surprised out here that they, they have bills. It's like, I, I'm not finished paying this shit. Like, I still have to pay. Um, again, thank you to everybody who answered the question, y'all. Let's get into the topic of the week, which is uh, a good one, I think. I tried to get a guest on here, but, it, you know, I waited too late uh, because this is definitely a topic that you want to have two people talking about. But, uh, you know, I'll try to get more guests on here, y'all. I got to schedule them ahead of time. I'll talk about that later. So the topic of this week is lying to save face. So the first point I want to get into is uh, men and women who lie about their relationship status. So I was talking to um, my bestie, Alex. And we, we just, we are really baffled at men and women who lie about being in relationships. So you know how you go out and you're dating a person, right? And you're dating them, a month passes, two months pass, you all have had several different conversations, you've asked that person straightforward, like, are you in a relationship, are you talking to anybody else? Do you have a girlfriend? You have a boyfriend? You got a, a baby on the way? Whatever. Are you engaged? Are you married? Please let me know. Person is like, no, nah, I'm not none of that. And it's like, please don't don't have nobody calling my phone talking about we in a relationship. You in a relationship? Like, nah, that's definitely not gonna happen. And then third month, somebody calling. Hey, this is Jasmine. I'm just letting you know that um, Isaac is actually my fiance. And you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Why did you have to lie, Isaac? I asked you so many times. Why you lie? Man, women, why do y'all lie about being in relationships? I don't get it. Somebody has to make me understand. If a person asks you the, the question straightforward, tell the truth. I'd rather a person say, yes, I am in a relationship, and then you let that person decide whether or not they still want to talk to you because you can't control what somebody's going to do but you will be able to see the truth of that person but instead you going around lying like no nah, I'm not in a relationship when your ass live in a whole house with a whole person that you in a whole relationship with I fail to understand that and I feel myself getting angry and so that leads me to the point of when you're sitting there telling a lie like that like, you're leading people on. And a lot of people, like, I have conversations all the time with my friends about uh, leading people on and what does that mean and what does it look like. That's what it looks like. When you lie and you over here and you're basically engaged, but yet you are seeking me out, courting me, doing all the shit that you probably don't do for your spouse over here, you're leading me on now because I've asked you if you were in a relationship. You get what I'm saying? You've lied. Every chance that I've asked you, every chance that you've had, you've lied. So not only are you leading me on, 
you leading your partner, your the person you live with, baby mama, whoever, fiance, you leading that person on too. Because now I'm going to look at that as you have no type of respect for either one of us. Because I, I, I can't understand how someone would choose to do that and how you would think that it's okay. Like in your mind, you've concocted such a bullshit scheme to, to date two people and you've made it make sense in your head. Like, do you not understand that you're leading me on to the point where, oh shit, I really like this dude. I haven't liked anybody like this in such a long time. And then I have to find out that you're engaged or you're actually married or you've been in a relationship for three or four years. Like what kind of shit is that? And then when you, when you find people, when you actually go out and start dating good people, like it's really hard for you to understand that that person is a, is a good person because you're so blocked off. You're so, um, what is it called? You have all this, you have your guards up so thick that you're not going to let your guards down for anybody. And you could be staring in the face of the, the greatest man that you're going to know, but you're going to miss him because of stupid shit like this. Like people who've lied to you so often. Now you feel like the only way to protect yourself is to keep your guards up at all time because you've asked this, this great man who's standing in front of you. Now you've asked him several times, you know, are you in a relationship? And he's telling you the truth. You know, this is the one who's telling you the truth, but in your mind, it's like, nah, you lying because anything you say, you lying because you're, you're bringing in past relationships, um, and all of that trauma into something new where you don't even know how to separate from it. That this is like still on a point of how you're leading people on like something you do like y'all out here with this bullshit. Like, no, I'm not in a relationship. You have to understand that you are traumatizing people because you got women out here do it too. Women like, no, I'm not in a relationship, but you out here traumatizing these dudes. So that's why they bring all that baggage over into something new and then ends up fucking over this really great girl because they didn't know how to separate from that. Y'all have to stop that shit. Like you have to stop it. And here's another point. Here, well, yeah, here's another point. This is what I truly don't understand. Men and women who cheat and, and, and they lie and say they're not in relationships and they go out and they start courting other people. How the hell are y'all balancing two different lives? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, how do you do that? So if you've ever cheated on somebody uh, or cheated in your relationship and you, you had like a full relationship, y'all live together. You know, y'all talk when you go in the house, y'all still having sex, but at the same time, you're out here dating an entirely different person in secret. You've been dating this person for a few months. You spending all your money on this person, but you also spending your money on your spouse over here. How, how, why is that okay with you? Are you not tired? Are you not mentally exhausted? Like, what are you doing? You're living two different lives. Are you not on the verge of a breakdown? How the hell are you balancing all of that? Why do you think it's okay for you? So now you over here living two different lives. You lie into both parties. Both parties find out about each other. And the thing is, they never, if it's two women who found, found out that they are sharing the same man, the women automatically go after each other. They never go after the man. It's never his fault. It's, oh, bitch, you sleep with my man. No, bitch, you sleep with my man. Who's talking to the man? You know, if it's two men who, who find out that they are sleeping with the same woman, the men never go after the women, the woman it's, who the fuck is you? Nah, who the fuck is you? I'm her, I'm her boyfriend. Nah, I'm, I'm her baby daddy. I'm, I'm her husband. Who the, like, no one is going after the woman. How does it make sense? Y'all out here live, living two separate lives. You're basically take, ruining names and taking lot, um, taking lives. That's what the fuck you're doing. Ruining, 
I don't even know what I said. You just fucking with people. That's what you're doing. But I'm, I'm honestly trying to understand where is this time that you're creating? Because at this point, you're creating time to to live two separate lives. I mean, this is like I am basically amazed and baffled at the same time, especially with these white men who be out here having three or four different mistresses. I'd be like, God damn, Peter and Paul, how, where, where do you get the money from? Cause these women are expensive and you're talking to four of them and that's not even including your wife. Jesus Christ, Jacob, where, where are you finding the time? How are you out here ruining two different lives? at the same time like what are, what are you doing and and so this brings me to the next point uh um which is this is all based on a fear of telling the truth i've never understood that so if you talk to to men who refuse to to tell this person that uh you know by the way i'm actually in a relationship You would rather ruin someone's life, their self-esteem, their trust, their worthiness. You'd rather ruin all of that than to simply tell a person, I'm actually in a relationship, but I really still like you too. Instead of doing that and letting that person decide whether or not, you know, she wants to continue seeing you or he wants to continue seeing you, you'd rather lie because you are scared to tell the truth for fear that they not going to want to be with you. I'm confused because don't you already have somebody at home anyway? So why the fuck are you scared to tell this person with whom you're about to start cheating on your wife, girlfriend, baby mama with that you in a relationship when you already got somebody at home? Somebody make it make sense. Cause I mean, I'm confused. And again, you know what? This, this takes me to my next point, which I've already kind of touched on. I don't think people are are understanding. Like when you lie about being in relationships, you're lying to save face. Are you really thinking about how it's going to affect the other person? Or both parties. Because for me, you might have that woman or that man at home who who's just like, oh, no, I'm not going nowhere. I already know what my husband or my wife is doing. At this point, I really don't give a fuck. She going to do her. He going to do him. But now you're bringing somebody else into, into this equation who is completely unaware of that, would not condone it if they knew about it. But have you, do you ever stop and think about how you are affecting that person? This person does not know that you're in a, a entire relationship. This person has decided to introduce you to the family, has introduced you to her children or his children. Um, you know, they've t- told you where they work at, how much money they make. They have completely let you into their life. And now... Six, seven months go by and they're finding out that the person that they thought they were going to be with, um, you know, this, they thought this relationship was gonna, you know, have some longevity to it. They got to find out, oh shit, my boyfriend actually is engaged. How did I not know this for seven months? My girlfriend actually has a husband that she lives with the fuck, but then y'all got to think about the red flags. Have you ever been to their house? Or why is it that we always got to go out? Why is it that you always come to my house? Why can't I never go to your house? Why are you always calling me and saying, hey, hold on. That's because your ass got to leave out the house. You know, why is it always we got to go to this side of town and never over here? Y'all have to know red flags. You get what I'm saying? 
because there are a bunch of them. But then here's the thing. You can't know that there are red flags to be seen if you don't know that you're being played. Because everybody does not enter into relationships with their guards up. It's simply, I like you. I don't play games. I give myself to people if I feel like they're worth it. And that's that's just people out here. Because a lot of people are hopeless romantics. Or a lot of people, I wouldn't even say hopeless romantics. A lot of people just don't do bullshit. They don't do that. They don't go into situations playing games. They're very adult about everything. But then that's when, you know, how, how it affects the other person is, oh shit, I just found out that you know, my boyfriend of eight months is actually uh, married. And, and now his wife is trying to, is basically stalking me and is threatening me. So now you've ruined this person's life and they're being stalked and threatened. And now they are made out to look like the bad person because they simply didn't know for eight months, but I'm sure somewhere in the back of their head, they had questions, but they chose to ignore those, ignore, excuse me, those questions. They chose to ignore those little, you know, intuitive thoughts that they had because it was like, oh no, he wouldn't do that. Well, she wouldn't do that because the person that I've gotten to know does not seem like that. You know, that's the person that you think you've got gotten to know, but it's affecting people because you're causing trauma. Like you're bringing trauma on to people and that trauma comes in the form of, you know, lack of trust or low self-esteem, um, worthlessness. I think I said worthiness the last time, but worthlessness is what I was trying to say. You know, you, you wonder why you go out and you date these people and you'd be like, Oh, he fine or, or she fine. But then you start dating them and it's like, God damn, his self-esteem is low. God damn. He's jealous of everything or God damn. She wants to know my exact move everywhere I go. I can't take this. That's because they brought over that trauma, that baggage from that last person who tore them down and lied and now they never separated from it. So now they're bringing that over into this new thing that could have been good. It could have been great, but they simply did never let go of the last thing. That's how you're affecting other people. That's the shit that comes from you lying and, and, and the whole, I'm scared. I was scared to tell you, you, what the fuck? You were scared to tell me that you were married. First off, you married. Why are you out here talking to other people anyway? If you're not satisfied with your marriage or your relationship, why the fuck are you in it? Why are you still married if you're not satisfied with your marriage? If you don't like going home at all, you don't want to see your spouse at all. Why are y'all still married? I'm not understanding and sh and maybe it's because I've never been married and I don't have to do the whole mortgage thing and compromise and share. But if I'm not s satisfied with someone, with my partner, if I don't want to go home, if it gets to that point where I don't even want to go home to the person that I share a home with, no, I have to get out. Fuck all of that. Well, it's not that easy because you know, we got to split everything. Oh, we'll figure it out. All I know is I have to get out of this because it's to the point where I don't even want to come to my house, the house that I'm paying for. I spent hella money. You, you out here spending hella money on hotels because you've avoided going home instead of getting out of the relationship and being with the person that you actually want to be with. Or maybe this is me and me being naive and I don't know anything, but I'm, I'm really trying to figure out why y'all out here living two different lives when you could just go and be with the person you want to be with, or you're just such an asshole. You're such a closed off person that you enjoy ruining people's lives. You enjoy 
leading two different lives. It's like, no, I can be this person over here. Then I could be that person over there. Actually, I'm going to go get a third person so I can be this person in the middle. What the, I, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I don't know what's wrong with you, you men. I don't know what's wrong with you women who do this, who lead these, these double lives. And y'all lie about being in relationships to the point where you cause such a shit storm. And then in the end, you're left there sitting there looking stupid, talking about how did all this happen? Bitch, it happened because you lied about being in a relationship and you had ample opportunity to tell that person that you were in a relationship you had ample opportunity to tell that person what they truly wanted to know what they already thought was true you had opportunity to tell them you just chose not to so now everybody out here sitting in the damn cold because you lied bitch you guessed it you was right you was motherfucking right you know, I, you know, I think I need to stop talking about this because, uh, I think so. Like I said before, I really did want to have, uh, my other friend Dominique on here. I think Dominique had to work, um, because this is a really great topic to, uh, basically argue, you know, have a second party in here so you can argue with them about it. Um, but I, I definitely just wanted to make this topic of the week because I have talked about this so much for this whole week, just with so many different people. I was like, this is some good shit to talk about because there's people out here doing it every day, all day. And they don't think that it's a problem. They don't think that it's an issue. They think it's okay to be married and have a girlfriend, or they think it's okay to lie about being engaged. Like Bitch, you just proposed to this woman one month ago. And now you out here taking me out on romantic ass dates. And I have to find out through the grapevine that you are engaged. When I've asked you this question several times, you continue to tell me no. Oh, okay. And see, that's when you cause a shit storm. Because, see, dudes, women, y'all don't ever know who you're dealing with. Everybody's nice in the beginning because, you know, y'all are trying to impress each other. But y'all be out here starting shit and you have people boiling. You don't know who y'all messing with until shit blows up in your face. And then you sitting there looking stupid like, damn, I didn't know she was crazy. I didn't know he was crazy. You're not going to know because everybody's nice in the beginning. <sighs> That's it. I'm I'm done talking about, you know, people who lie about being in relationships because, you know, it doesn't make me angry. It just baffles me that people, there are so many unhappy people out here. I think that's what I'm more concerned about or what's more alarming to me. People my age are so unhappy with the relationships that they are in and they don't know how to get out of them. That's alarming to me. Uh, so we're going to move on, y'all. Let's move on to Ratchet Drink Chronicles. Y'all, right now, I am actually drinking a very, very ratchet drink. And I didn't even try to, you know, mix this uh, on purpose. It was honestly by accident. So I'm going to tell y'all. That's real good. All right, so I'm currently drinking on uh, Tito's Handmade Vodka, which is the devil, cranberry juice, and a Glacier Cherry uh, Gatorade. It's all mixed together. I'm going to tell y'all. <sighs> I went to do this uh, film, this documentary thing, project that I had to do. They gave us some food. I was like, you know what? I'll take a drink too. But I was like, I can't drink this drink. That's Tito's. I got to drive home. I was also drinking a Gatorade because I was still drunk from the night before. And I was like, I'll just pour it in here and then drink when I get home. And then got home. No, I did not drink and drive. I got home and I took a little sip. And I was like, God damn it. This is actually good. Y'all. Tito's handmade vodka. Uh, cranberry juice and glacier cherry Gatorade. Mix that shit together. It actually tastes delicious. Put you a few ice cubes in there. 
And uh, you know, just be at home when you're drinking this because Tito's is the devil and the devil is out here working. But I'm going I'm to let the devil work me tonight. Mm, that's it for Ratchet Drink Chronicles. Y'all, that's really good. All right, y'all, let, let me get my shout outs. I have a few of them to get through. So first thing first is shout out to the cast of Sunny Grands. Uh, this past Tuesday, we had our cast dinner. Shout out to everybody who showed up. I had a wonderful time with y'all. If you're in the Chicagoland area on August 11th at Jones College Prep, 6 p.m. August 11th of this year, you all come out and see part two of Sunny Grand's um, to stage play. Um, and enjoy yourself. So shout out to the cast of that. Again, I had a wonderful time at our cast dinner. Shout out to Curtis Hudges, the director, and Tasha Davis for gathering us all. And thank you to Curtis for paying for all of that pizza because the shit couldn't have been cheap. Um, who else we got? Um, shout out to my old job. I'm not going to say the name. But y'all, yeah, last Tuesday was the last day at my old job because I got a new job I was like I went in there at 9 o'clock I left at 11.30 I checked the fuck out I was like bye you know I said bye to everybody I li uh, literally went into people's offices people that I really don't even talk to but I went in there and I was like I just wanted to let you all know that today is my last day and I'm just saying bye to y'all because I'm a decent person I told that to everybody. And I'm basically I'm like I'm I'm saying bye to you because I'm decent. That's how you leave. Um so I mean shout out to them. Shout out to my coworkers. They did some really nice things to me to me. <laughs> for me they got me a bottle of wine, they got me a card, everybody signed it. They brought in, you know, donuts and juice and all of that stuff. I really appreciate y'all. Um I would say that I'm going to miss the job, but I'm not. <sighs> um, so, yeah. Also, shout out to Four Star Casting here in the Chicago area. I booked a movie that I really can't tell y'all about. It's a really big movie. Um, I had a very small part. I was basically, it was actually the part of an extra. I don't think... I'm 99.997% sure that I'm not going to end up in a movie. But it's okay, I still get paid. But I just wanted to thank Four Star for giving me the chance to be on this set with... Uh, listen, y'all, if I could tell y'all, I would. But it's a top director in Hollywood. He basically walked past me and I almost had a heart attack. And I was like, oh my God, you directed... It was amazing. I actually enjoyed being on the set. We filmed on the south side of Chicago this past Wednesday, April 11th. And uh, I think I spent a total of four hours on the set and still get paid for the whole day. So shout out to Four Star Casting for the wonderful opportunity. Uh, shout out to my best friend, Alex. <sighs> April 14th was her 30th birthday and um, a lot of shit happened. I will not tell y'all some of the shit because it ain't my business to tell. All I want to say is shout out to Jaime over at the bar down on Madison um, in, uh, where were we, in Oak Park. I think that was Oak Park or Forest Park, one of those. Listen, y'all, we ran up a check for Alex's birthday and Jaime paid the entire bill. And he kept coming over to us and was like, you all want something else? Let me know. And I was like, listen, Jaime, let me finish this, this third drink. Shit. How much you going to pay for? I'm going to pay. I pay for everything. I, oh, baby, we finna run up a check. So the shout out to my friend Alex for turning 30. Shout out to her for being fine and um, catching her, uh, Jaime. And shout out to Jaime for paying that whole damn bill because we ran up a check. All in all, for, for her 30th birthday, y'all, I spent $22. And that was to give me something to eat. And I had a glass of Prosecco. And I should have probably spent over $100, but I spent $22. Oh, baby, I'm cheap. 
Um, yeah, and happy birthday to Alex, because I, I really did have a wonderful time. Happy 30th best friend. I love you, girl, with your drunk ass. Um, and then my last shout out goes to Aaron Davis. Shout out to Aaron Davis for casting me in his documentary. So I filmed my scene. I did that. Uh, shout out to the people on Facebook who really thought that I was pregnant. Y'all dumb as hell. Why would I purposely, why on earth, on God's green, purple, blue, red, colorful earth, would I choose to get pregnant? Now, I put this picture up uh, of me pregnant with a guy. Shout out to James Barbie. Man, I love that dude. He's so funny. Uh, but with, with my co-star in the documentary, uh, I put a picture up of, of me and him together, and I look like I'm pregnant because, you know, it's part of the documentary. And I got even my family members and friends like, congrats. I was like, y'all so stupid. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, shout out to Aaron Davis and his wife, Kim, uh, for, you know, calling me and, and, and being like, we got a part for you if you'd like to do the documentary. Of course I would. Uh, that's all my shout outs, y'all. I had a wonderful week. I really did. It was very eventful. Um, this is actually all the shit that I've done in this week. Um, I had a really nice date. And, uh, I think that's it. I mean, basically at this time I need to go to sleep cause I have to start my new job. Uh, shout out to my new job. Y'all better be what I expect you to be. Y'all that's, uh, that's it. We've come to the end of the show. I've done enough talking, talking. I've done enough enough. I've done talking. <sighs> I don't know why y'all let me do this. I, I really don't. Um, oh, you guys, make sure you follow Vibes Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On Facebook and Twitter, it's Vibes Podcast. That's Vibes with a Z, V-I-B-E-Z, um, podcast on Facebook and Twitter. And then on Instagram, it's at A-S-K-V-I-B-E-Z. Oh, excuse me, y'all. That's Ask Vibes over on Instagram. Make sure you um, follow us on those. Um, and then find us on Apple Music, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, CastBox, and Stitcher. Download past episodes. Catch up on the present ones or the newer ones. Um, make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to go and subscribe. I can never say that word every time I'm drinking. Subscribe. Tell your friends to go and press the the button and start, you know, S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-E. Subscribe. There we go. Tell them to subscribe <laughs> to Vibes Podcast and uh, catch up on all the episodes. Also, if you know any independent artists, music artists, I don't care what kind of music they do, tell them to email askvibes at gmail.com to have their music featured on the podcast as song of the week or artist of the week um because y'all it would be so much easier if people email me their songs instead of me having to go out and find one that I really like um I think that's it oh you guys make sure once again that you go and support Pink Caravan the song, this week's song of the week is uh, Pop Lock and Lemon Drops. That's by Pink Caravan, who is on Spotify and iTunes. Um, Pink Caravan is all one word. So check her out and check her music out. Uh, her EP, A Very Sad Happy Birthday. Now, I think that's it. Um, we've come to the end of the row. Although we go to the end. Uh, the road and I can't let go I don't know I just I don't know why I do these things this that collard green cornbread neck bone back back get it from my mama and you don't know where your daddy at hey with these vibes that's it y'all I can't I just I can't keep acting like this I can't. 
And we out this bitch.